Morning. So we're going to talk about seeding today. I'm mainly going to focus on Bermuda and zoysia or warm season grasses. This is an important video to make because if you make them, if you do the mistake I'm going to talk about, it'll impact you for years to come. I don't want you to make that mistake. So hold on one sec. Howdy. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to break this video into sort of segments and I'll cover a few different subjects. I'm actually out here and I'm filming in the rain. Thank God. It's it's May 4th and we haven't, the last rainfall was April 16th and we have been dry. This has been horrible, but I'm going to break it apart and explain seeding so you understand it. The first thing you have to know is if you don't want to sit here and watch this whole video, you can go get the lawn guides. The lawn guides are free and we break apart seeding, especially the Bermuda seeding. We talk about common Bermuda versus hybrid versus sod and the problems that you can run into, serious problems you can run into that'll last forever if you don't follow it. So get the lawn guides. Remember, when you go to freelawncareguide.com, that's the cool season one, but at the top there's a link to Zoysia and a link to Bermuda. That's where you find it. This is Yukon Bermuda grass seed. This replicates, this and several other brands, replicate a hybrid sod. Hybrid sod is a very fine blade. It's small, very fine blade. When you go to the big box stores, don't do this. When you go to the big box stores or you go online, you get a big bag of Bermuda seed for 20 bucks. Uh, that's common Bermuda. They won't even list the variety on the back, but it's common Bermuda. Common Bermuda has a totally different look, feel, and growth habit than a sod does. So we want to replicate. So if you have to seed areas on your sodded lawn, you're going to have to get something like this. Now this is a little, I think this is a little two pound bag and it's not cheap. I don't know. I may, may pay paid like uh, 30 bucks for this little teeny bag, but Bermuda seed is tiny. It's not like a rye or a fescue. Bermuda seed, I don't even think you can see it falling in the bag, but it's tiny. Um, I mean, it looks like particles of salt. So it covers a pretty big area and don't forget Bermuda spreads pretty aggressively. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is I'm going to talk about the type of seed. Then remember, you want a hybrid. In the description below, I'm going to link to the products I use, the fertilizers. I'll link to, I'll find some links for some good seed for you guys. But we also do, um, there's one type of zoysia seed. If you're going to zoysia seed, we did a zoysia seeding down at the beach house. We brought in three truckloads of dirt. We zoysia seeded it and boom, within four months, we had a gorgeous zoysia lawn. Everyone says it takes two years to establish a zoysia lawn. I proved them wrong. It's gorgeous down there. So what are the factors when you're planting? There's a window for planting warm season grasses and it's not like cool season. Cool season grasses, we can come out in the spring and we can actually do a spring seeding. And some of that seed will die off when the summertime comes because it doesn't have established roots and whatever. And that's why cool season guys, you guys are actually seeding more so in the fall so that your temperatures are actually declining and that, and that increases the root growth versus temperatures going up and your lawn stressing out. For us, for warm season guys, we actually want the opposite. We can't go out and seed early. We have to wait until the temperatures, the daytime temperatures are pretty much consistently in the 80s. Soil temperature range, I think for germination of that is somewhere around 65 degrees for warm season grasses and they're slow to germinate. So that window, the wind temperature window is when you start to see 80s and that's typically May and June, that's when you can go out and you can see your lawn. That's number one. Number two, use the right type of, of uh, seed. Next thing I'm gonna talk about is water. Unfortunately, it is a battle. You have to be able to have some kind of water. Otherwise, you're not gonna have success. And what I'm talking about is dry seed. <clears throat> I haven't watered this. It's sitting in a bag and it's not gonna germinate for the next 20 years until I put it in the ground and I put water on it. Seed has to be wet. It doesn't have to sit in mud, but it has to be moist. It's just like new sod. You have to make the commitment to go out there and water it every single day, if not two or three times a day. And I'm not talking about trying to get that water three inches down. I'm just talking about a light surface watering, light surface watering. And there's one trick though I want you to follow. And what's that trick? So if I go out at noon and it's 85 degrees and I put out a little bit of water, it's gonna evaporate pretty quickly. Well, there's a trick and it's a nighttime watering trick. As soon as that sun sets and you can still see it's a little bit light out, 
run your irrigation system or water. And why is that? It's because that level of watering will stay on that seed and that seed will stay wet for a good 14 hours. You've got to, if you're gonna plant seed, go out with a nighttime watering, go out and hit it and it'll stay wet. And it stays damp and wet for all that whole period versus a daytime watering. So yes, it's gonna dry out during the day and so you can do a nighttime watering and then go out and do a, a afternoon watering, but you've gotta stay up on your watering, folks, if you're gonna plant seed. Now let's talk about soil preparation. If you're going to seed an established lawn, then you're gonna get a scarifier. You can rent one and it's just a bunch of swinging blades. That's all it is. You don't want the spring, you don't want those springy tines. You actually want blades. So if you go rent one, uh, you'll rent uh, a scarifier and I'll have these swinging blades under it and it just sort of lightly stirs up the ground. I actually bought a scarifier and I'll link to the one that I bought. This is a newer one, it's a little bit wider. I think this one's like 16 inches wide and it really works well, but I don't use the spring attachment. That's not what we want. We want the blades. We want to cut those little channels inside of here. Um, that's how I prepped up, both at the Zoysia, all the lawns I've ever done, I use a scarifier because we only want that seed an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch in the ground. It's a myth that you want to plant it deep. Seeds only have so much energy to break through the ground, so you don't want them that deep. And matter of fact, with all seeds, the rule of thumb is is two to three times the height of the seed. So if a if a Bermuda seed is you know a thirty second of an inch, you only want it about an eighth to a quarter of an inch. You barely want it on the ground. So that's how I prepare. Now, usually when I go out and I prepare raw dirt or raw areas, here's what I'll put down. This is what I did in my daughter's house, and I'm going to show you in a second. Uh, she had solid. Remember, if you remember, she had solid red clay water loosen up the ground two scarify three human char four pgf balance five shitload of seed this is what we're doing we're doing a bunch of seed three different seed types putting it out real heavy just to get the soil to break up now we're going to scarify the other way get it down in and we went out there with a scarifier and i put down pgf balance fertilizer and I put down humichar um, and then I scarified it and then I put down the seed and I scarified it one more time and guess what now she has a green backyard but that's a cool season grass so we put down cool season because that was months ago it was too cold to plant um, to plant a warm season grass but it's it's a kind of a rule of thumb that I have is, is don't wait get some type of roots in the ground. So for her, we did a cool season planting to get roots in the ground. And now we're gonna come back in a couple of weeks and a week or two, we're gonna go back out there and probably gonna do a mix. I'm gonna mix Bermuda and Zoysia back there just because she has a lot of trees around. So I'm gonna do a mix. I'm gonna plant uh, Zenith Zoysia and I'm gonna plant a little bit of this Yukon. Whatever seed I have left in here, I'm just gonna throw and just let them compete. Whichever one wins, that's fine. So we're gonna turn that into a warm season grass. The neighbors across the street, in a minute, I'm gonna take you across the street, same thing. Two months ago, they had a new septic system put in and drain field. Well, it was too cold to plant. They have Bermuda, it's too cold to plant. So I told them, I said, get roots in the ground. What I want you to do is go out and get some fescue or some rye, and I want you to plant it, and sure enough, they did it, and they've got nice green grass over there. And yesterday, because we're at the right zone, temperature zone, I went out with Yukon, and I threw out some Yukon seed. So we're gonna let those two battle over there because they have some shady areas. I'm just gonna let them battle it out. And that's one thing you can do. If you have an area on your lawn, let's say you have mostly Bermuda, but you have like um, woods in the back that doesn't do well, mix seeds back there because the Bermuda is going to be the aggressive one a cool season grass is not going to aggressively spread so that's a little trick that you can do back over there let the seeds battle out so let me explain a little bit more what I'm talking about here now I usually just do this in periods where it's too cool to plant a warm season grass but you can also do this if you have an area that's Bermuda is just not growing because there's a lot of shade. Let me show you what I did over here. So this is the septic and drain field that they had. Now keep in mind, this was done months ago. And what I told them, they had a company come in and spread some dirt and get this all leveled out because it looked like crap. And so what I told them was, I want you to put down some fescue and I want you to put down some rye. And that's what they did. And you can see that that's all germinating. 
Now, <laughs> what I have done since I'm in the 80s, I have come back and I have spread Bermuda seed on top of this because they have a Bermuda lawn. But here's the problem. They have a lot of shade and so the Bermuda doesn't like to grow behind the house. So what we're gonna have is we're actually gonna have a battle over here and some of this fescue will survive, but a lot of that Bermuda will eventually take over that fescue. So that is a little trick that you can do. So let's talk about some bare spots on your lawn real quick because that's gonna come up as well too. If you just have some bare spots on your lawn, there really isn't a whole bunch of reason to seed. You can actually just improve those areas and figure out why you have bare spots. Now I told Ryan not to edge this week and I will tell, show you why. I've done videos before where we take these runners you see these runners right here? So you can go in and you can steal these runners, try and get a little bit of the roots here, pull them out, reach in, go all the way in, and pull these out. And you can actually plant these runners in those bare spots once you actually improve the soil. So now I can take these runners, and I'm gonna come over to a bare spot here. And all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make a couple little holes here. I've modified this soil to make it nice and nice and neat you can put down potting soil put whatever you want down but i'm just going to lay these runners right in this hole like this cover them up and like i said you can come into a bare spot like this take these runners and space them around and all of a sudden that will actually help grow so instead of a spot like this having to grow from the outside in you also have growth from the inside out and that'll double the speed of recovery so let me just go over a couple questions that I always seem to get on seeding. Number one, and I think one of the biggest questions is, is Doc, I put down pre-emergent, you know, two months ago, can I still seed? And that's a good question. One thing I would do is I would go back online. Any pre-emergent that you use, you can find the label online and read the label. It'll tell you how many days until reseed. So if you did put down a pre-emergent, typically my rule of thumb is about 90 days. You want to have 90 days. The other thing you can do is you can break up that ground. So you can come by with an aerator and a scarifier and break that pre-emergent surface contact and usually that'll take care of it. But if you just put down pre-emergent two or three weeks ago, you're not going to have luck seeding. You probably will have a failure on your seed. Next question, Doc, should I aerate before I seed? Sure, why not? Go ahead and aerate, go ahead and scarify, put the seed down scarify it again just get it into the soil but you've got to maintain that watering schedule i can't stress that enough uh fertilizing doc what should i use as far as fertilizers go um once that seed starts to grow you can actually down at the beach house i actually used i think it was green chalker i just put down light coats of green chalker on top of that zoysia and man i'll tell you what it was <laughs> within four months i had an absolutely gorgeous zoysia lawn which is incredible they always say it takes about two years, but all I did was just put down basically humichar and green chalker. That's all I used on my uh, zoysia until it got completely established. And after about three months, I put down PGF Complete, the 1608 down there, because that front was high on phosphorus. But put down a little bit of humichar, put down a little bit of uh, PGF Balance, scarify, just like on my daughter's lawn that I did, scarify that in, put down your seed, and just water, water, and just leave it. As soon as the grass, if you're on a cool season, don't let it get really, really long, by the way. Start cutting it right away. Same thing with Bermuda. Don't wait for that grass to get really long. Get it into the habit of cutting. Not extremely short, but get it into the habit of cutting. Anyways, I hope this video has helped you guys out a little bit. Um, when I go over and seed my daughter's lawn with the zoysia and Bermuda mix that I'm gonna do, I'll put that on video for you guys. Hit that subscribe button. Uh, I think probably maybe next week I'll be shooting that. We're doing a lot, still doing a lot of work out at the farm. And just so you know, I'm, I'm pretty much, if you didn't watch my previous video, we've pretty much shut off our fertilizer. We're putting down Dirt Booster. The new Dirt Booster is out. That's all self-contained and it does. I mean, look at what it does. This is just phenomenal. So we're putting down Dirt Booster. If my lawn, if I want to make it a little bit darker green, I might spray a little Super Juice or put down a little Green Shocker. But man, I'll tell you what, improving your soil is so important, so important. And that's what we're doing at the farm as well too. As a matter of fact, we started plowing our rows and what's the first thing I did? I went down every single row out at the farm, I put down dirt booster and then I tilled that in getting ready to plant seeds. So anyways, hope this all helped.
Talk to you later. Talk.